Anzac dedication. On this day, Anzac received the baptism of fire and became one of the immortal names in history. We think of the comrades who went out to battle but did not return. We feel them still near us in spirit. We wish to be worthy of their great sacrifice. Let us therefore once again dedicate ourselves to the service of the ideals for which they died. As dawn pierced the night, so let their memory inspire us to work for the coming of the new light into the dark places of the world. Welcome to this Anzac Day Reflection. I'm Marianne Hornberg. I'm chaplain at Selwyn Oaks. Today, I will share with you a brief Anzac commemoration. Years ago, I was the padre to the local RSA, and whenever I was asked to participate in an official event, they asked me to dress up, wear my clericals. So I thought that I would wear my clerical shirt today and a red stole so that I could honor them and to make this a formal occasion. And if you look over my shoulder, I have an Anzac wreath which was made from knitted poppies. The poppies were knitted especially for today by the residents of Selwyn Oaks. So it's very special to have this wreath. As been many occasions recently, this is a most unusual Anzac day. Usually thousands gather for dawn services throughout New Zealand. There are parades and gatherings at cenotaphs and other memorials, Anzac biscuits and a wee drink at the RSA, but not today. A virtual service was held at 6 a.m. this morning. New Zealanders were invited to stand at our gates just before the service to honor the Anzacs. Maybe you were up and joined others in this very early morning ceremony. I welcome you to this commemoration where we remember with thanksgiving those who made the supreme sacrifice in the time of war, those who gave their lives physically and mentally, and those who have been peacemakers. We pray that offering of their lives may not have been in vain. Today, we dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom, and peace. And we ask for the wisdom and the strength to build a better world. The hymn that has been chosen for today is for the healing of the nations. It's one of those traditional Anzac hymns, and you might like to sing along with it.
the readings that is often used on Anzac Day comes from the book of Revelation, which is the last book in the New Testament. From chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Anzac Day is one of New Zealand's most important national holidays. It's a day that draws together New Zealanders in a way that no other day does. It's a day that brings a sense of collective pride in our nation and citizens. While it's a day of commemoration, it's also a day to acknowledge and to celebrate the heroism and the sacrifices that were made sacrifices so that we might have the freedom to live in a just society. And it's a unique day. It doesn't celebrate victory like most national days do. It doesn't glorify war. It's the anniversary of the landing of New Zealand and Australian troops at Gallipoli in 1915. That campaign that led to thousands of deaths Rather than victory, we honor the sacrifice. As you know, Anzac Day was established to remember those who died at Gallipoli and those who gave their lives in other parts of the world during World War I. And as the years passed, and as there were many more wars, the day has come to be a time to acknowledge the sacrifice of all who have died in warfare and the contribution and the suffering of all those who have served. And we do that year after year at dawn services, at Anzac Day parades, gatherings at RSAs, remembering and honoring. But as we observe Anzac Day this year, we're in a strange and a new world. There are no gatherings, no parades. We're all at home waiting and healing our country. We're in a world with a different kind of enemy, unseen, a virus. It has affected people all around the world and many have lost their lives. People in all nations are being asked to make sacrifices and some huge sacrifices. We've been fortunate in New Zealand, there have been only a few deaths but our lives have been completely changed and they may never be the same again. We are making many sacrifices. And though we are not coming together today, we have come together as a nation to protect ourselves and our neighbors. As the prime minister says, we are a team of 5 million. We're doing it together. We are courageous. We are tenacious. For me, that seems to reflect the Anzac spirit. We're willing to sacrifice for the good of all. We do care about the vulnerable in our society. So today, as we honor those who have gone before us, we can also have a sense of pride in ourselves, our nation, for what we are doing right now. But this isn't the end point. It's part of the journey. The vision of John in Revelation is of a new earth and a new heaven where there are no more tears. And may I say, no more war. The old order has passed away for a world of peace and justice and mercy. And so for us, it's important to reflect on the past so that we can build the future. 
As we come to the time of our official remembering, let me share with you the Anzac Requiem. On this day, above all days, we remember all those who served our nation in times of war, who gave up their lives for New Zealand and for freedom everywhere, who still sleep and lie amid the ridges of Gallipoli and the terraced hills of Palestine, in the cemeteries of France and the simmering haze of the Libyan desert, amidst the olive groves of Greece and Crete, and the Middle East and the Far East. In the Pacific, Malaysia, Korea, Vietnam, Bosnia, East Timor, Afghanistan, Iraq, and in all the theaters of war since, and in unknown resting places on every continent and in every sea. We remember those who suffered as prisoners of war and those who died in captivity. We remember all who have fallen since in the defense of peace on land, in the air, and on the sea. We think of every man, woman, and child of all nations who in those crucial years died so that the light of freedom and humanity might continue to shine. And to the peacemakers and the peacekeepers who have served and who are serving in many places across the globe, may their efforts be not in vain. May we and our successors prove ever worthy of their sacrifice for us. O oh God of love and liberty, we thank you for the peace and the security we enjoy. And we remember with thanksgiving those who made the supreme sacrifice for us in the time of war. We pray that the offering of their lives may not have been in vain. May your grace enable us this day to dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom, and peace, and give us the wisdom and strength to build a better world. And we pray for the peace of the world. We especially entrust to your mercy the homeless and refugees, those who have been dispossessed through war, those whose lives and families have been disrupted and who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray for countries who are war-torn even today. May sanity return and kindness win through wherever there is warfare. We ask our prayers through Jesus Christ. Amen. Usually when we gather on Anzac Day, we stand for the playing of the last post and the saying of the ode. You might like to stand now. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. But the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. Thank you. 
Thank you for sharing this Anzac Day commemoration. May it contribute to your sense of unity on this Anzac Day. And so we will conclude with the national anthem. 